welcome to men's week when are you gonna do some content about the men when are you gonna do content for the men oh you asked for it you got it toyota it's men's week and in men's week we do content strictly directed at the men for the men man stuff so let's start out number one i am a consultant coach consultant i'm not a man of god i'm not a, I'm, I, I believe in god but i'm not a man of the cloth i am not a therapist i'm a phd i'm not a therapist i'm not a clinician I have extensive study in, in, in the human mind, sociology, psychology, anthropology, but that's for my own edification and some training behind their scenes. But I often recommend people to clinicians. So number one, if you ever hear someone saying that he should have did this instead of that, tell them I, he is a consultant. He's a coach. He's a consultant. He's not here for your feelings. If, if, raise your hand if you've ever played any sports. If, you have, if you've ever played any sports or any martial arts or anything like that, I want you guys to think about Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal, one of the most dominant uh, big men of all time. But he was not the best free throw shooter. I guarantee you when Shaquille O'Neal humbled himself to get help on the free throws, the coach didn't go in and say, come on, big guy, do it this way. Good coaches know how to put their foot square in your shoulder blades and insert their foot square up your butt to get production out of you. Many of you have never been coached at any level, and I believe in coaching. I'm an academic coach. Whatever you have in life, you should have some coaching in the martial arts, whatever. So if you've never been in any kind of coaching, you've never been on any kind of discipline. And if you're, especially if you're raised in a household that's very liberal, then the things that a coach or a consultant may say may shock you. So I am grateful that more and more professional people are starting to find their way over to these sectors because you'll see doctors, attorneys, physicians, accountants, engineers, real estate salespeople, uh, truckers, uh, 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 contractors, and they will tell you, you don't have time on the on the deep sea rig. You don't have time when you're doing a blowout protector. You don't have time when you're working in the in the deep sea well. You don't have time when you're on the work site when you're up under contractual pressure to coddle somebody's effing feelings. Understand that number one, I am a coach, I'm a consultant. I also reflect what's given back to me. I mirror as good coaches and consultants off do. So number one, anytime somebody reaches out to me, they're reaching out to me for my professional opinion or advice in what I'm holding myself out to be. And whether you like it or not, whether you think I have the right credentials or not, I've got enough work in the field to say to, for you to be able to shut your freaking mouth. You can't go to school to learn what it is that I do. There's no degree program in the plant on, on the planet that can make you competent at this level. This is earned. So all this, whose school did he go to, whatever? Did you sit down? You're foolish. Some of the very people you revere the most in the black community are the elders. And they got there because they have knowledge, acquired knowledge, and useful knowledge, which is called wisdom. So I'm a coach. I'm a consultant. I'm not here for your feelings. I, I mirror when I get back. I'm also running a program. I have to keep things on a kind of a schedule, kind of a structure. So there are a lot of things going on at one time. And more importantly, if someone wants my considered advice in a, per, in a personal way or a private way, they are free to book a session. But coming to my program is coming to my program to get a taste of what I do for free. That is a choice that you make. And every time I talk to someone, I don't worry about the chat room. You haven't even seen me address the chat room. I am doing my professional considered best. 
So let's bring this full circle. Do I hate? Do I hate? Do I hate women? Do I hate? Do I hate women? Black women in particular? That's foolish. Hell no. Shout out to the CIA. What's going on? What's going on? What is going on, man? We got an important broadcast tonight. And we're going to get right into it. We're going to get right into this one. This is a, one of the few times I do a show before my show. But this is because I'm going to talk about a subject matter that uh, is needs a conversation with the family. Conversation with the family. So this is not an everybody conversation. This is a conversation I think needs to be had. And we're going to title this one, Image as Power, Birth of a Mindset. Birth of a Mindset. A lot, of been, a lot has been going on online this last weekend, uh, especially with the brother Kwame Brown. Um, shout out to you, brother. Uh, a lot of stuff has been going on with that. And as a certified image master, certified image professional, somebody with extensive background in professional marketing and advertising, I think it's time for me to teach class. It's time for people, black people in particular, black, black people in general, black men in particular, to understand the power of image. Image as power. I've spoken about it in many different ways, but I'm going to take you back to the beginning. Two years ago, I did this broadcast. You're a young black man. A black man wore different kinds of clothes and they see if people treated him differently. What's up, y'all? I'm Pedro. I'm 24, and like many black men, I'm extremely careful about what I choose to wear. Every day, we're dressing for survival. And basically, what it said is he did an experiment where I must perform the same activities in both weeks while dressing up. My shirt must be tucked in. I must wear a tie or a blazer. While dressed down, outfits I wear must be something I can comfortably sleep in. I will not expose my tattoos. I will not change my typical behaviors or act differently than I normally would. That's how he went around the first day. And this is what he said. My thoughts while I dressed up. I felt pretentious. This brother was dressed this way. And he said he felt, listen to what he said now. I felt pretentious, uncomfortable and embarrassed, especially in a blazer. Especially in a blazer. That's a damn shame. That black men have, our images dropped so much to where a man coming out of the house dressed like a man feels uncomfortable, embarrassed, pretentious. Because he, we no longer associate our image with anything other than something you can sleep in and roll out of your bed. That's on us. I softened my walk to mute the piercing click clack of my shoes. My belt had to constantly be adjusted on top of it. And these pants were giving me a wedgie. In other words, them dress shoes, them hard shoes. You know, when I say pull up, get rid of the Jordans and put and pull up your pants and get rid of the Jordans. That's what this man is talking about. He felt uncomfortable. Dressing in the uniform of business. Why? What are his experiences? A woman who worked at 7-Eleven greeted me with a smile and instantly asked, what's this for? A, a meeting or interview? Or for, but she normally say meeting, interview, or court. She said, it's for work, I said, as I grabbed my change for the bus. She raised her eyebrow and nodded her head. This was in the first 10 minutes of my day. I thought, damn, this is going to be an eventful few weeks. My bus pass didn't have enough money on it. But before I could even get the change I got from 7-Eleven, the driver said, come on, on it's okay. That's pretty tight. I got to save my change. At lunch, I headed to BLD, an upscale spot for lunch. The service was cool. The service seated me in the front of the restaurant where I received my order ahead of two other guys that were before me. I walked over to Chase Bank. The security guard not only opened the door for me, but also gave me a heads up about signing the waiting list to be assisted by a teller. On my way out, I asked him where ATM was, and he chased me down to inform me about available parking, assuming I drove, but I walked. Pretty damn decent treatment, if I'm say. But then he dressed this way, to where he felt more comfortable. 
I felt much more comfortable with my hoodie and sweats. I don't have to worry about the click clack of my dress shoes. Experience, I saw the same woman in 7-Eleven. She only asked me if I wanted a receipt. No smile, no conversation, just business. My bus pass, again, didn't have money on it, but the bus driver would not move until I put in my change. Mm. Went to the same place for lunch. I was greeted by the same server. This time, they looked toward the back of the restaurant for a place to seat me. He ended up seating me next to the cash register. I received my food fairly fast, and, I, and he asked me if I needed hot sauce. <laughs> uh, I caught him looking at me through his peripheral during, during my meal. At Chase, the same security guard only greeted me with a head nod. Nobody assisted me to walk in. After sitting there for several minutes, I remembered about the sign-in list. The teller who helped me last week was talking to a client. And while, while this teller who greeted me last week was walking a client out and after passing me a couple of times, she finally approached me. What's the problem here? The problem is in our minds, in this young man's mind, dressing up, dressing like a man makes you wrong. He was comfortable dressing like a boy. And I'm going to say it, it's a boy. I just took off joggers that I had on earlier today, but it's still not what men wear. Not taking care of business. But we have, we have been convinced to take our own image so lightly that we don't even value the way we walk out of the house. So don't be surprised when somebody who looks like you can play with your image. That's why you can have somebody call that man, uh, don't, don't judge him because this people's crazy. That's why we can do it because we don't value each other's image. I told you I might not be going where you think I'm going with this. Image as power. And it is time out for it. My opinion is black men, you need, we need to start calling out black men who play with the image of other black men. Calling them crazy. Calling them thugs. Calling them criminals. When they don't have any of these records. Calling them betas. Calling them gay. All this other stuff. I want to give a few people, I'm going to give uh, about 30 seconds for folks to get online, but I wanted to talk about something that uh, it doesn't, doesn't get a lot of discussion. If you notice online on YouTube, many of the fashion channels, men's style channels, such and so forth, they'll just put up a video about, about the product, the end result, the shirt, the shoe, the hat, the whatever. But a lot, but you rarely, if ever, hear anybody speaking about why it's important, why you should care, why a guy should, why it matters. So what ends up happening is, unless you're already into it, or unless you are willing or at a place and point in life where you're looking for answers, a lot of times it goes over a lot of people's heads, and it doesn't matter whether it's regarding you know, fragrances, watches, anything else. A lot of times, guys, we just look at stuff and be like, man, I don't mess with that. I don't get down with that. Uh, okay. But I want to tell you guys one thing in particular. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter how old you are, how much money you have. Your image, your reputation, your personal brand is a tool. It is not disposable. You know, we as men, we got to understand something. I can go into the numbers and get real granular and talk about women buy most men's clothes. A lot of guys, we don't understand that what you put on communicates to the world. We just look at it as clothes and a lot of us were like I ain't spending no money on no clothes I'm not gonna blow my money on no clothes I'm not gonna waste my money on no clothes why do I need to spend money on something that I'm gonna throw away all these other things not realizing that look you know how it works when someone is looking like they belong in that part or whatever role you know 
it's been said over and over and over again guys your image is important if you don't care about it if you just getting by then you don't get upset if you're not getting the outcomes you want and a lot of times guys don't want to hear that truth we just don't you know if I come on here talking about you know female nature such and so forth and if I would start bashing women or talking about talking noise oh man the likes and the, everything would go through the through the roof but when you start talking to men saying guys you know cheap is some of the most expensive stuff out there you got to do better with your image you need to get in the gym or start working out you know check out your nutrition drink more water think about what you're wearing put a little thought into it and stop acting like clothes and your image is just this disposable thing that no one's supposed to care about or that you're special and the rules don't apply to you guys a lot of guys don't want to hear that because it goes counter to what they believe and you know they'll get in the comment section asking questions when they're really not looking for answers I'm making this video for the guys who are looking for answers look bottom line whether you believe it or not your image is crucial it's important and if you don't think it is go dress like a homeless person this weekend go waddle around in the mud and go dress like a homeless person and walk around this weekend and see how much differently you get treated. That seems extreme to some guys. Image, not ego. Image and ego are two different things. And here's the thing, any guy that relates image to ego is really fishing for a problem. You know what, most guys know what I'm talking about. You know good, that's what really gets this discussion twisted up. When, when someone conflates the argument means I'm talking about image and they start talking about fronting or about talking about your appearance and you talk about you know good and doggone people know good and doggone well what we're talking about they just don't want to hear it it's like well I don't want to deal with that and that's really what it is a lot of us don't want to deal with the reality that look you have to dress the part. You need to look like you're about business to have business happen, whether it's personal or professional. If you were going to go look for a defense attorney, you wouldn't hire someone that did not look the part. So rather than debate whether or not you think, let's get real, whether, or not, whether than debating whether or not you think it's right, you think it's fair, you think it's superficial, you think it's, you know, selling out, whatever, just deal with the reality. The rules are there. You know it exists. And the guys I want to talk to are the ones that understand, look, your image is important. Use it and as a tool to get what you want. You know, better to get to the other side of success, make it, and then debate whether or not it's important. Then sit down debating, oh, I don't want it ain't that important. Why waste my time and waste my money? Okay. It's not a waste of time, it's not a waste of money. You just got to manage your image and handle it correctly. That's, and here's the thing, a lot of us weren't taught this. A lot of us were taught that dressing, you know, especially if you came from the Bible Belt, you were taught that image is vanity, image is sinful, and we got all this cultural programming to overcome. So while other guys or other people realize, you know what, image is important and crucial, just as important as education and knowledge and everything else, it's the other part of the pie. I mean, it goes hand in hand. It's not as a, as important or less important. It all goes hand in hand. So a lot of times guys are going into a fight with one hand tied behind your back and one eye blindfolded versus going in fully armed. I'm trying to arm a lot of guys saying, you know what? Quality is better than quantity. Fit is better than brand or fashion. None of this stuff is controversial. Manage your image and don't let your image and manage your image or deal with the outcomes. If you want to walk around sagging, you know, dressing a stereotypical way or a way that doesn't really communicate who you are or what you're trying to accomplish, cool. But don't get upset with the outcomes. The outcomes are going to be the way they are. There are rules. The world works according to rules. You have them. Even the diehard people who say, 
uh, it ain't me. I don't, I'm not like that. I'm better than, I'm more elevated in my thinking. Okay, well, go dress like a homeless person. Like I say, prove it to yourself. But overall, guys, understand this. The problem most guys have with image and it's because we weren't taught, we don't understand it, and people in general, men in particular, things we don't understand or things that we don't know, we tend to shun them versus trying to understand them. Doesn't matter if you shun it, it still affects you. It's like people, I'm giving you one example. It's like the people who say, you know what? All politicians are crooked. Republican, Democrat, Independent, whatever. I'm not into politics. I don't vote. Okay, but you still live in the land controlled by the laws. Again, you, somebody just asked, well, I spend $150 on a basic t-shirt. Wrong question. You're, you're talking about cost. Talk about value. That's where a lot of guys get hung up. You worry about the cost. None of the questions are about value or what you're getting. It's all about how much it costs. We don't think about value. Minister Jap made a, a video the other day talking about how some people have a currency exchange mindset. We worry about the price tag versus what we're getting. So instead of asking me what I spend $150 for a basic t-shirt, that is a loaded question. You've already said it's a basic t-shirt and $150. Tell me what you're getting for $150. Tell me what the shirt is made out of. Tell me how does it fit and how does it fit into your image? Again, you, you're, you're, you're making the point. Value, yes, but a t-shirt, no. Again, you're talking about the actual t-shirt. You're not talking about the material, the fit, and your image. You're talking about this. You're saying, yeah, value is important, but I'm not going to spend that much money for a rag. You don't know what this rag is made out of. You just assume one rag is like any other rag. And that's the problem. We just assume everything is like the other thing. A shoe that looks this way is like a shoe that looks this way. That's why this, why cheap shoemakers are getting guys for money. And who came on my channel the other day? O'Shea was talking about it. How he bought a $60 pair of shoes that look really nice and look like the $400 pair of shoes, but then he wore them. And inside of four months, they're cracking, tearing up. And he's like, man, now I got to go out and replace it. Those cheap shoes are the most expensive thing you know. Instead of debating the cost, understand the point. But a lot of times, I'm just going to go in. Dudes just want to be right. You just want to be right. You don't want to understand what's going on. You want to come on and say, you're wrong. That doesn't make sense. I'm good the way I am. Then do respect. This isn't the channel for you. This isn't the this isn't the, this isn't the stuff for you. The channel is for people who want to use their image to get better, not people who want to prove that they know what they're doing already. You don't come to a channel that's a how-to channel, a how to install a. a I, again, you're talking about cost. He says, "I have a lot of expensive things, sir. You're getting butt hurt." No one's talking about cost. You're talking about cost. You're talking about cost. Again, I'm not going to answer any more of your, your questions because you're not asking anything. You're talking about cost. I'm talking about value and what you get. Tell me what you're, instead of asking me these questions, you want to debate, call in tonight. I'll tell you what, you can call in tonight since you have lots of expensive things. Who said anything about what cost means? Just because you spend a lot of money on something doesn't mean it's necessarily a better quality. I can go get a $3,000 Armani suit and line it up with a $700 Talia suit, and Talia is better quality than the Armani. You're equating cost with brand. You're making my points. That's the whole thing. And instead of listening to what I'm saying, you're dead set on being right. I'm not trying to... There's, and my point is, there's no helping someone who's already got their mind made up. So to everyone who is interested in learning how to become the best versions of themselves, I am willing to put this knowledge out here. What a lot of other channels don't do, they'll just drop a video and leave. Product pitching, move on. I put it out there. I have live streams. 
this information I'm giving you, you would normally have to pay for. And instead of realizing that, you know what? I'm getting some value here. Let me try to learn something. A lot of times people are rather debate versus saying, hmm, this isn't a debate channel. This is not an open platform for what you want to talk about. If you have a question, I will answer the question. But if you want to just rant and go on and talk about how you're right and I'm wrong, you need to go to another channel. I'm not trying to be rude, but this is not your platform. This is a platform for me to help men become the best versions of themselves. I'm not going to, I, and that requires me telling the truth, giving you insider knowledge and information. Unless you want to sit up and build, if you want to, you know, you wouldn't hire me to be your consultant, pay my fee, and then argue with the results. I'm done. You wouldn't, no, no different than you would go to your doctor and have him tell him your symptoms, tell him your issues, and then he, yeah, your opinion. Opinions are like assholes. Everyone's got one. The difference between your opinion and mine is I, my, my opinion is a professional opinion. I do this for a living. You put clothes on your back, granted, they may be expensive clothes or not, whatever, that does not qualify you as a professional. Unless you're making, you know, and you think this is an opinion. No, it's not an opinion. Your opinion and my opinion aren't equal weight. It's no different than saying because you watch Law and Order or because you know attorneys or because you've gone to court that you're qualified to be someone's counsel. That's the problem with interaction like this. No, there's no reason to say, okay, so you know it's correct. So what I'm saying is, guys, a lot of the a lot of the problems we have with our image is because we know everything. That's why a lot of fashion channels don't go live stream. You know, you look in the comment section, and the people in the comment section tend to be people who are not looking for information. They got a point to prove. People who tend to send emails or say thank you or want help tend not to ask any questions in the comments. So overall, guys, if you really want to use your image to your advantage, if you really want to use your image as a tool to get what you want, you're going to have to put what you think to the side and let someone come in and talk to you about what they know. And then if you don't agree, cool do you do you but ultimately it comes down to this seven seconds one two three four five six seven inside of seven seconds of meeting or seeing someone inside of seven seconds someone seeing you or meeting you for the first time they make 11 different assumptions about you those assumptions stick they will not change without a lot of effort and work if you are getting all of the outcomes you want in life, if you're as successful as you want to be, you're earning as much as you want, you're, you're, you're where your career is, you, where you, you know what it means. If you're where you want to be, we can disagree. I don't think asking someone to look at another channel is cool. No, we can't disagree. We can disagree without being disagreeable. You're not disagreeing with anything I've said. You're arguing. You have an opinion that's not based on anything but your opinion. And when I try to educate you, you keep asking questions. Quite honestly, I'm going to say something. That's kind of like how women act. A man can, you can ask a man something and he answers you. And instead of saying, okay, you want to question his, you want to question his answer with another question. And there's never an end to it. It's just ongoing dialogue. Look, bottom line is you have an image. Everyone has an image, not just the commenter. Everyone has an image. Use it to your advantage. Most people don't. Most people don't. And the people that do get the outcomes that go with it. The people that don't get the outcomes that go with that. The guys I'm trying to work with are the guys that don't realize how important their image is and then want to do something about it. Then, then understand, man, just by making a tweak here or a tweak there, my outcomes are so much better. That's why when you go to a job interview, go out to a nightclub, whatever, the guy that comes in looking a certain way tends to get treated a certain way. And, you know, they get whatever. And we've all been there. You, you know who they are. You know, you go into a job interview. 
10 candidates are lined up, then somebody comes in looking a certain way, you're like, dang, there's no way I can compete with that. Well, how do you know? You lost on the image battle. But if you go in being the best version of you, there's just no downside to that. And there's no counter argument to that. So ultimately, guys, I'm going to wrap this one up. In general, men suffer from not knowing. A lot of times we don't know. Brothers in particular, we love to argue and start shit. I don't mind that. But what's not going to happen is you're not going to come onto the channel and argue like, you can ask questions. I answer questions. You, I dare you to find any other channel that goes out and answers as many questions or as engaged as I am. But what you're not going to do is come onto the channel and debate me. And, ult and debate me from a point of you've already got your mind made up. You just got a point to prove. That's not this. That's not this. I will answer your questions, but you're going to have to have an, an, an end point to that question. And the guys who are looking for answers, here's one thing I will say is I will look for guys who have actually gone to channels, fashion channels, whatever, and started changing things. You know, you'll send me an email saying how this channel has helped you, how you tweak this, tweak that. I invite you guys to write that kind of stuff in the comment section because it, it will have more credibility than just coming from me. See, a lot of times people as a youth, a lot of times as YouTubers or, or, or someone with a public persona, people get fixated on the messenger instead of the message. You know, they're worried about whether they like me or don't like me whether they like my style, don't like my style, whether they agree with what I'm saying or don't agree, but it doesn't really matter if I say fit is better than fashion. Value, I mean, quality is better than quantity. You never debate, you never disagree with the facts. It's always the fluff. Your, your channel has helped me a lot with hate. I don't know what that means. Um, here's the thing. I will say this directly to brothers. Honestly, the reality out there is I have gotten more doors open for me that have been traditionally closed based upon my appearance. My appearance. I dress the way I dress for me. I have a brand. You have a brand. Everyone has a brand. What do people say about you when you leave the room? That is your brand, that is your image, that is your reputation. It, there's no two ways about it. Your question is, is it working for you or is it not? Is it getting you the outcomes you want? Is it not? Can it get you better outcomes? The people I want to work with are the people who understand they have a brand and they want and they want to tweak it or the ones that are getting their eyes or, or waking up saying man I didn't know I had a brand but how can I use it to make me better there's 20% of the people out there you're never going to be able to help but I can say this and I'm going to wrap up until tonight I noticed that even other YouTubers that I've talked to I've worked with everyone's kind of you can see people are starting to dress better or, or take their image more seriously because here's the thing whether you agree with me or not, like my presentation or channel or not, the world is a cruel place. The market decides, and no one's going to, if you don't look the part, you're not even going to get to the next level. You can see a woman, the woman of your dreams. If you aren't carrying yourself in a certain way, you're not going to even get to the point to where she can see what kind of great person you are. You're not going to get there. You can walk, you can be eminently qualified for a position. You could have all the credentials and it could be your turn, but if you do not look the part, you're not going to even get an opportunity. You know that. And instead of being upset that that's the reality, accept it. Use it to your advantage. Men do that. Some guys have a harder time with it than others. Well, here's the thing. Until you accept those realities, you're going to get the outcomes you want. And that's really what this is about. Accept either outcome. It doesn't matter uh, to anyone other than you. When you go to bed at night, you live with your positive and negative outcomes. Till the next time, talk to you later. People have been asking me what I thought about the things that have been going on. And I'm, and I'm sitting back and I'm saying it's about time. 
It's about time we start talking about how we depict ourselves in media. How we choose to show up in media. We can't. And while back in 1915, you can blame D.W. Griffith for putting actors in blackface. And you can blame them for saying this was what you thought black people were. You can't do that the same way now. We don't like our image. It's up to us to change it. So I'm going to do this. I'm not going to change the way I move. I'm not going to change the way I move. I've been saying it since day one. There's plenty enough room. There's plenty of room. There's plenty of room. And we do better instead of trying to decide who leads. There's not, who needs to lead when there's the, who needs to lead when the market ain't even created? Build your own. Joe Rogan don't complain about what somebody else is doing. He don't complain about what Philip DeFranco is doing. They don't, they don't worry themselves about what PewDiePie is doing or Mr. Beast or Dude Perfect. None of them. Image is powerful, people. Image, I mage, mage, wizard, however you want to slice it. It is powerful. How you show up, what you do, what you say, belies not just you. Like I was trying to tell, I've tried to say for the longest, there's an individual image, but there's also an ethnic image. And if we want better outcomes as men, we must improve our ethnic image as men. That comes from the way we carry ourselves, the way we, the way we appear, A, the way we behave, B, the way we communicate, the words that come out of our mouths, the way we type, the way we write. How many of you will sit down and write a comment in the comment section? misspellings, I mean, in intentionally misspelling words, no punctuation, and just leave it there. How about this? Write it on a note. How about you just hit spell check and grammar and let the system correct it because it's next to you, black man. Appear, behave, communicate. And if you don't know how, time to go back to school. I will say that it is a struggle oftentimes listen to the way we speak to one another. We can improve this. But it all comes down to this thing right here. The Internet is here to stay. And what we put online. Well, <laughs> shout out to Maximus Decimus Meridius. What we do in life echoes an eternity. Once it's online, it will echo an eternity. Stop playing with your image. It's not a toy. It's not a game. Stop playing with other black men's image. It's not a toy. It's a game. And I will tell you this. When you choose to play with a man's image, you are choosing violence. Things are that's an in, going around now you're choosing to wake you're waking up and choosing violence when you mess with somebody's image because you're dealing with their brand their reputation so don't get surprised when it comes back at you in ways that you could not anticipate that's why i don't beef i'm not playing with nobody's image i'm not playing with anybody's brand too important i'd rather leave it alone Because as soon as time you decide to do that to somebody, you can't get upset when they come back at you. And are we not seeing that right now? 
Lots of lessons in the last week or so. What are we choosing to learn? I appreciate everybody showing up, but uh, that's what we got to do. Until the next time, we got to do what we got to do. Peace. We're gone. Video releasing. I'm a PhD. Nothing can stop me. I'm a Cause I'm addicted to